Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geopolitical Trends. My name is David Waralu. So good to be with you as always. Looks like China might be able to do it again. Yes, break another deal this time around between Russia and Ukraine. In this video, I am going to share with you my assessments considering uh, China's recent success in uh, brokering a deal between the arch enemies Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, we shouldn't reach a quick conclusion by saying it's a done deal that China will be able to do so. And I will tell you why. So, but before I'll get into all this, I'd like to thank the channel members as always for their continued support and for you, the subscribers also, thank you so much. And if this is your first time landing on my channel here, please make sure to subscribe and smash that notification button so you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And thank you all for your support and the nice comments you guys been putting out there. So I truly, truly appreciate it. And like I said, it's what keeps me, you guys, it's what keeps me going. And I mean it. So let's dive in into this. So, well, there is an upcoming visit, believe it or not, to Russia by none other than President Xi Jinping of China. So the interesting thing about this, usually uh, uh, I recall how, you know, security protocols and so forth. When I used to work in Washington, sometimes we would be dealing with issues like that. Well, not an issue, but just protocol. Well, here's the thing. Uh, both countries, China and Russia, they are staying mum. Yeah, they keep in mum about the the uh, the possibility of a visit next week or two. Yeah, and for a reason. That's like a rule. And for security reasons, usually. And usually, uh, this kind of uh, uh, arrangements will be coordinated between both countries uh, concurrently, by mutual agreement, by the way, of both parties. And this is not just between China and Russia. Other countries do that. Uh, usually we do it between us and the, the Brits sometimes. Uh, we can do it with... It depends. It depends. But in the case of uh, Russia and China, it has a different flavor to it, given how close they are. So, Well, the spokesperson for the Kremlin, uh, Dmitry Peskov, said in, in, in a briefing, and I quote, let me get you guys the quote here. He said, when there is a such readiness, we will let you know, end of quote. And, and again, nothing to be alarmed about it, just security protocols. That's the norm, not in there. But we're not going to focus here on the security aspect. We're going to focus about the possibility of China suggesting that it wants to work on a deal to end the conflict in Ukraine. Well, the high on the agenda for President Xi's visit to Russia is expected to be China's effort to get uh, uh, both sides, Russia and Ukraine, uh, to the negotiating table uh, after especially uh, what just happened with uh, China's presenting its 12th plan for resolving the Ukraine crisis. Well, we all know the reality how the West reacted to that. And again, if I am to put my geopolitical analyst hat on, I'm going to tell you straightforward that the West does not want an initiative, let alone peaceful one, to come from China. After now, just being proven that China was able to break a deal. It brokered the deal between the arch enemies, Iran and Saudi Arabia. And knowing what I know about those two countries, I tell you, I am even surprised that China was able to do it. And it did. It's because the animosity between Saudi Arabia and Iran goes way back. It goes about 1,400 years ago. So we couldn't do it. Of course, for us, we lost credibility. The collective West lost credibility. Nobody could take us now seriously. I mean, let's just say, state it the way it is. So, well, the 12 points initiative, uh, uh, sort of a peace plan that uh, China proposed was immediately met with skepticism, skepticism in the West. You know, they already rejected it. The U.S. said flat out, well, we are not going to accept this or that. 
Yeah, right there. Why? For a simple reason. They didn't, they, the West, the United States, did not want the initiative to be initiated, let alone the problem would be resolved by a non-Western uh, uh, country. So, even Ukraine President Comedian Zelensky expressed a rare openness about it. So, and we all know the truth. Let's just, let's not pretend, okay? Let's just say it straightforward. President Comedian Z cannot make a decision. President Comedian Z will not be allowed to make a decision. That's a fact. You know, I have nothing against the guy, except that he is, uh, he has no clue what he put his countrymen and, and, and in, in, into. My heart goes to the Ukrainian people, the people. But he doesn't understand geopolitics. He doesn't understand international relations. He just being used. And you will think someone like in that position will take stand and say, no, I don't want to be used. You know, I care for my people. He doesn't have the gut to do it. That's why he can say whatever. It's just like uh, whatever. Nobody's going to take him seriously. So, Well, what he said, and I found the quote, by the way. He said, and I quote, I believe that the fact that China started talking about Ukraine is not bad. But the question is what follows the words. End of quote. Well, <laughs> I don't even know, I'm laughing, you know, it's kind of, the guy doesn't know what he's saying, doesn't understand the world of diplomacy, doesn't understand what global affairs are all about. So to issue a statement like this, just tells me personally, and again, I am not, have nothing against the guy, it just, this indicates to me he doesn't understand the dynamics. Really, he doesn't. You know, let alone he won't be able to do any talks whatsoever. You all remember when uh, the former uh, uh, clown of P uh, of Britain, PM uh, Bojo Boris Johnson, flew all the way to Ukraine to tell comedian Zelensky, "Do not sit down in negotiating tables with the Russians." Yeah, because we, the Americans, told Bojo to go and deliver the message. That's the truth about it. So, so here's the thing regarding the 12, point, the 12 point plan China provided, which I read it. It's very pragmatic, realistic. And even with that, the West rejected it. The West is saying that the 12 point plan takes a clear anti possession, given it condemns NATO expansion. What is the truth? <laughs> You know, how did the conflict in Ukraine start to begin with? Let's just be honest about it. Did NATO expand and push Ukraine into wanting it into the alliance? What do you think the Russians going to do? It's common sense. So now you're hearing the West saying, oh, the 12 plans that China's proposing, it's an anti-Western possession. You know, enough of this nonsense. It's about time someone will say to the West, enough of this. You need to stop this nonsense, you know. And when they're saying why well, it's condemn NATO's expansion while also calling on relevant countries to stop abusing unilateral sanctions and do their share in de-escalating the Ukraine crisis. But the West didn't like that. And this is, one now, this is why now you are seeing one country after another start to going back to the drawing board and re sort of rethinking it's dealing with the West, the US, the EU, you name it. The begin in another word, the beginning of the end for the Western hegemony. That's what it is. So but yet if we are to think pragmatically and realistically, we just saw what happened with China having the ability to broker a deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. So China has shown, and again, I am not defending China. I don't speak on behalf of any country, just to put this uh, on the record, you know. What I speak of, if what's realistic, what's pragmatic, and what's right, 
You know, there's a saying we used to have in the military, uh, for those who might be American watching this, and if, if you've been in the military, there's the saying that goes, uh, hard right and easy wrong. It is so hard to do the right thing, but it is so easy to do the wrong thing. So, so I'm not defending any country. I'm not supporting any country. I support what's right. And when I see right, I'll stand by it and I will speak on its behalf. And that's what I'm saying here. China has shown its ability to make peace, given just what happened on this Friday historic day of the restorations of diplomatic ties and normalization between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which was the deal, by the way, was inked in Beijing. And once again, as one who spent time in the Middle East, I was on the ground for years. I wrote the books about Iran and, China and uh, Saudi Arabia. I am in process of writing a book about China. So I kind of understand the depth of those cultures, understand them from politically, socially, culturally, linguistically. So... And I tell you, the animosity that exists between those countries, one will think there is no way those two will ever get along. And here it is. China was able to do that. So you kind of call a spade a spade. We need to accept the reality when there is right that has been done. We need to recognize it. In this case of the Ukraine and Russia, China might have some challenges. Not because Russia will, will turn down China's offer. It's because the West, mainly the US and NATO. Europeans are so weak. Europeans are like puppets. Europeans have, they can't extend. Uh, I always in, in, envision the EU like this. The EU is like a child that never grows up and is always in constant need of direction and discipline. That's what the EU represent to me. They are so weak beyond belief. It's no different than Australia right now with the PM elbow going for this nuclear sub at over $100 billion while the country is struggling economically. Canberra is lying to the Aussies. Straightforward. So that's what I see. So, so here is my brief conclusion for you because as I always say, I like to keep this concise, short, to the point. So, last week, history returned to the Middle East. And for those who had not already noticed, we once again live in a multipolar world defined by great powers competition. Yeah, several outside powers now compete with the West for prestige, influence, and power in the region. What am I referring to? Yes, you guessed it right. I'm referring to China and Russia. So China was able to broker this agreement between Saudi Arabia and Iran in part because, do you guys know why? Because he maintained cordial relations with both parties. In other words, it stayed neutral. In other words, it didn't dictate to countries how to behave. It didn't impose or shove the ideology down their throat. It let them be. That's why. Local leaders now, as I said earlier, one country after another seeing where the trend is headed. Local leaders have moved diplomatic, uh, sort of, they have now more diplomatic options than they did in the recent past. Mainly just around the invasion of Iraq, you know. In a world where history has returned of a, a, a policy of sort of, and I'm going to put this in quotes, you are either with us or against us, end of quote. You all remember that, right? It's probably not valuable, yeah, as it once was. That is where I see the changes coming up. So, And by the way, guys, I am going to do a live stream on this topic towards the end of the week. I hope you can join me again. And by the way, make sure please to smash the notification button because I was informed through your comments that some of them weren't aware of, of the live, live stream. I post that two, two days before. But if you, have, if you are not uh, subscribed or have the notification button on, you will not know. So, so I hope you guys find this very informative. 
And as always, remember, geopolitics impacts your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.